Hey guys, welcome to Life is Christy. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to turn 1B hair to burgundy. Today, I'll be using a 20 inch frontal and three bundles of 28, 30, and 32 inches. Yes, girl, quality, okay? Make sure you guys click the link in my description to my hair page so you can shop with me. Don't mind how I'm looking right now. I just had came from work and I had to do this hair for my client. So we're gonna be starting off with the bundles. Make sure you guys put on some clothes that you don't really need because this process does get messy and the clothes will get ruined. So first, I always clip the hair to the table. The bleach I'll be using today is Quick Glue by L'Oreal. I have a love-hate relationship with this bleach and I'm gonna let you guys know why. And I'm gonna be using a 40 volume developer by Salon Care. Make sure you guys do wear gloves because the solution of the bleach and developer does burn your skin. I'm going to start off by putting four to like six scoops of bleaching powder in the mixing bowl and then adding developer after. The reason why I have a love-hate relationship with this quick glue bleach is because it's very thick, meaning you're going to have to add a lot of developer to get it to the good consistency that you would like, which is a smooth consistency. And in the actual packaging, it doesn't really come with a lot of bleaching powder. But I love this bleach because it gets the job done faster than like the white bleach. It lifts the hair faster and it also doesn't leave as many brassy tones as the white bleach would, you know. I bought these gloves at the beauty supply store and when I tell you guys they were so trash, they were like an extra large. I couldn't use the gloves that were in the house because the virus, my mom be tripping. Once you get your bleach into a not too watery, not too thick consistency, you're going to take the bundles and you're going to start off at the bottom. That's how I usually start off. I feel like it's easier that way. When I do um, continue to put the bleach on, I use my hands to spread it and then I start using a brush to like brush it out because I feel like it spreads way much better that way. Make sure when you're bleaching, you reach all the way to the top of the bundle, like to the weft, so the whole bundle could be able to lighten and you don't miss any spots. The goal is to try to bleach the hair as evenly as possible because if you leave any black hair behind or put more bleach on another piece of hair than the other piece of hair, then when we do end up dyeing the hair, it'll have a bunch of patchy spots and we don't want that. Now we're moving on to the back of the bundle. Bleaching is very time consuming. As you can see, I started using my hands because I was on a time limit. I had assignments due and I've done this before. So I know how to maneuver with it and make it still come out good without using a brush. But if it's your first time, I don't suggest you do it this way. I did lose the footage of me finishing the bundle, but I promise you guys, me doing this frontal right now is the same exact process. With the frontal, I start at the bottom, move to the top. And since I'm bleaching the full frontal, it doesn't really matter. I'm not really careful with the lace or anything because I could just bleach the knots at the same time. As you can see it is the same process as the bundle just keep trying to bleach as evenly as possible now you guys see i use the full pack of bleaching powder that's why i hate it l'oreal y'all have to do better with y'all quick and blue okay to bleach the knots it doesn't really matter since you're not really caring about the bleach seeping through the other side so just go crazy with it now after i finish with the main part of the front and the back i'm going to flip the frontal back over and i'm going to go in with the bleach spread the hair apart check which parts didn't get bleached check what parts need more bleach i'm going to keep double checking double checking double checking double checking because i don't want to have a patchy result when i color this hair that would be very ugly i hate that So 
after I'm done rechecking and everything, don't mind me dancing, like, my song was on, okay? But, yeah, after I'm done, I had a lumen foil on the side. I did the same thing with the bundle. So, when you're putting the hair in the aluminum foil, you don't want to press it down. You want it to be able to have airflow. So, once you do that, you fold it, and I put them all on the side. Here is everything on the floor. This, it was like after five minutes. You don't want it like that. I left it for like 20 minutes, and it lifted to this nice brown color. So, I went and I washed it off. And usually when I wash it off the first time, I don't use conditioner. I just use shampoo. As you can see, this is the shampoo that I use. It was just old. I couldn't find anything. <laughs> I couldn't find anything that I usually use. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I usually use Aussie's shampoo. When you're washing bleach out of your hair, waves, whatever you're washing it out of, please make sure that the water is clear because if any bleach is left behind, the hair can be hard and it can damage the hair. So be mindful of that. While shampooing the hair and washing it out, I used the paddle brush so I could detangle it at the same time. And this was the result after making sure everything was out of the hair. For the frontal, I did use the purple shampoo but i guess i didn't record that part but i used the purple shampoo to get rid of the brassiness of the lace then i went in again with the green garnier bottle shampoo that i used for my bundles to just finish washing everything out and making sure that all the bleach is out now on to the water coloring. I used three bottles of Burgundy Envy for the bundles, one for each bundle. To be honest with you guys, I really don't like water coloring. Water coloring is it's really a hit or miss. Depending on the color, I could say. Depending on the color, it's a hit or miss. But because of the virus and Sally's being closed, I had to use this as an alternative. So first, I fill all three of these containers with hot water. So I started off by putting the first bundle in the first container. I was going for a really dark burgundy color. So as you can see when I first put it in, it was still very light. So I decided to leave it in there for an hour or two. After doing the same thing for each bundle, I went back to check, and as you can see, it's way darker than before. I left it in there for like an hour and a half. I left the last one in for two hours because I was um, doing other things. But yeah, so as you can see, it's way darker than before. After I got the color to how I wanted it to be, I washed all the hair off and I conditioned it. I didn't shampoo it again. So here we're here next day and these are what the bundles look like after being air dried and straightened. Definitely still has a lot of life to it. So now we're going to work on the frontal. I put a plastic bag over my mannequin head to protect it. I learned that the hard way. I have like three mannequin heads now. But so what you want to do is you want to put the frontal on the mannequin head as if it was a wig. So you use the the pins you put it in make sure it's secure make sure you secure the back as well so you don't accidentally flip the flip it over and mess up the lace while you're dyeing it i used two bottles of burgundy envy for the frontal 
So what you want to do is you want to put it in the container since we're not watercoloring it. I will not watercolor a frontal because who is going to mess up the lace? Not me. So you want to make sure you lay down a towel before you start anything. So first you want to section off the first part that, of the frontal that you're going to dye. I've, water, I've watercolored wigs and stuff before, but when it's a darker color, I tend to stay away from it due to the fact that it's darker and it can stain the lace. So what you want to do is you want to take some dye in your hands first and then run it through the bottom. And then my trick of not staining the lace is to use a smaller brush. As you see right now, it's not like the blue one that I was using earlier in the video. So it's smaller and it's more easy to not make a mistake, if you know what I mean. So you want to get as close as possible to the lace. Be very careful. Don't rush. Take your time, please. One thing I did off camera was spray the lace with got to be because the got to be sprayed because it's like a, a extra shield. You know what I mean? But I'm still careful even though I sprayed it. So next you want before you section off the next section color the bottom of the next section so it'll be easier for you and you won't have to worry about it when you do section it off So I finished the first side and off camera I decided to go ahead and color the whole front part of the frontal so I won't have to keep doing it each section it's easier that way so I just continue to do the same thing on the other side until I finish the frontal. So now the final step is to go back in and see if there's any blonde pieces left, like that blonde piece you see right there. So I just go in and I just fill it in with the burgundy color so it won't be patchy. And you guys know I hate that by now. So yeah, so I just go in through each section of the frontal. And if I see a blonde piece or a burgundy piece that didn't get that much um, color on it, I just saturate it that's what you want you want to over it doesn't matter you want to overly saturate if you have some left you just want to finish saturating it so i took a plastic bag and i wrapped it around the hair and i left it on there for two hours while i did other stuff this is what the frontal looked like after i washed and conditioned it as you can see the lace is very much not stained <laughs> 
so this was the end result thank you guys for watching my video please like comment and subscribe follow me on my social media platforms and i'll see you guys in my next video